StreamYard, an amazing live streaming tool with one huge fatal flaw. Welcome to Mana Studio. My name is Nathan. With me, as always, is my tech director, Ronald. It's kind of dark back there. Here he is, Ronald. Yeah, he's a he's a stegosaurus. So today we're going to talk about StreamYard. And if you don't know, StreamYard is a online live streaming tool, like an online encoder for you to use. Basically, think of like OBS and Zoom put together online. But let's start with a story. So about three weeks ago, Cameron Preston and myself, Cameron and Preston are the authors of The Soul Felt It's Worth. We were about to do a live stream. Uh, we, I was using OBS and I was using NDI and Skype to bring them into OBS and everything fell apart. It just <laughs> went terribly. We started the live stream. All of the audio was unhearable because of these echoes, because of the NDI update, I think. I don't know. So we did this live stream and it was completely unusable. I had to delete it, which is unfortunate. So we needed to find another way that we could continue to do these live streams. They're in Oklahoma, I'm in St. Louis, so we're doing all this virtually. We're not here in person together. So we signed up for StreamYard. So StreamYard, as I said, think of OBS and Zoom put together. Basically an online live streaming tool, an encoder, a broadcast studio, they call it, where you can bring in guests from other areas, put you all on the screen, you can hear each other, you can talk to each other, and then you can live stream that out to different platforms like YouTube and Facebook and whatnot. So we did our next broadcast with StreamYard, and I will say it went flawlessly. So let's take a look at StreamYard. I'll show you what it is, how to use it, what it can do, what it can't do, and then we'll talk about that thing I said at the beginning. So once you log into StreamYard, this is the first thing you'll see. I don't have any broadcasts created yet, but we'll go ahead and create one. So you have your past broadcasts. These are the ones we've done previously, and then our upcoming broadcasts. So we'll create a broadcast. And then you can select all the channels that you want it to go to. So these are the channels we've already entered. You have to enter your own channels, of course. We have a Frank Voices Facebook page. That's the writers. Then we have Reawaken Him's Facebook page. That's me. Then we have my YouTube page. So we stream to all three of those at the same time. Two Facebook pages and a YouTube page. And it works really well in that regard. So right now I'm just going to select my... YouTube, because this will be just be a private stream. Set to private so nobody can see it. Then we'll add a description. And you can have it stream out right now or schedule for later. I almost always schedule for later so I can kind of promote the event in different places. Um, so you can upload a thumbnail and set the time and then it'll create that event for you on Facebook and YouTube and any other uh, platform you're streaming to. Right now I'm just gonna stream uh, immediately so I won't schedule for later so let's create that broadcast now it's taking me into the broadcast studio all right you can see my webcam comes up there um, you can turn off your cam and mic to start I haven't actually entered the broadcast studio yet or that little settings panel is where you actually customize uh, you can pick which camera you're using which microphone you're using Type in your name, that'll be shown right under your uh, video like that, and then enter broadcast studio. And here we go, now we are in the broadcast studio. Obviously I'm not in the stream yet, so you need to click this add stream, and now I am in the stream. Now let me add another camera to the stream. One of the cool things about StreamYard is it's very easy to bring in guests who aren't on your account. Uh, you just hit this invite button here at the bottom, then it'll give you a link uh, that you can send out to people they click on that and it'll bring them straight into the studio so i'm gonna actually send that link to myself and that way i can bring in my iphone as you can see there there's that link so they just click on that link and it will take them to the broadcast studio on whatever device they're in they can use their mobile phones their ipads all right we'll give ronald his own camera now so you can add the guests to the stream here at the bottom or they can add themselves. So I'll click add to stream. And now you can see we have both of us. So once you have more than one camera, you can kind of adjust where the cameras are 
on the screen those are those buttons down here so there's mine full screen there's both half screen there's our full pictures so one of the things I wish you could do on StreamYard that you cannot is manually adjust the size and positioning of the cameras. You cannot do that. I think for most people that's good. So it doesn't get messed up. They can just click those buttons on the bottom, but coming from OBS, I really like to customize as much as humanly possible. And that's one of my issues with this in general is it's not fully customizable. No, I don't think that's what they were going for. I wish it was, but I think for most people, it's probably a good mix of customizable, but still easy to use. So you can't manually adjust where those are, but you can use these buttons here at the bottom to have a couple different options. You can also share your screen down here, just very similar to how you would do in Zoom. It's a little trippy, so I'm gonna turn that off, but so that's screen sharing. And again, as you have more videos, you'll have more video options of where each one goes on this bottom area here. I think you can have up to 10 people on StreamYard. All right, so let's look at some of the customization options here on this side. So right now you're seeing the comments. So these are the comments that will come in from Facebook or YouTube or wherever you're streaming to that I really, really like. So we stream to three different places and we can see all of the comments here in one place, which is great. And not just that, we can respond and you can show the comment on the screen like that. I love that feature. That's You can do that in OBS. It's just a lot more difficult. So all your comments will show up here and you can just click show if you want to show a comment on screen, which is that we've actually done quite a few times um, in our live streams. Then if we go down to the next option, we have banners. So if I click on one of these, it will just bring up a um, text banner that goes on the bottom. I have several here that I can choose between. I kind of make them before the live stream and then I, because we're going over certain lyrics of songs, so I can add those to the bottom. And then if you're in the middle of a stream and you want to add something, you can add something too, like that. Click show and there you go. Then we'll go down to brand. So this is where most of your customization options are. You can add overlays and backgrounds and that sort of thing. Right now you're just seeing the basic. Um, you can actually set brands. So we have our the Soul Felt is Worth brand here. There we go. And that changes the color scheme and it saves the things I've uploaded as overlays and backgrounds and such. So you can change your brand color. Um, that's nice. So that'll change what the overlays and such are. So if I go back to banners click on a banner now it'll be that orange color that I've chosen you can add a logo I don't have a logo because I have this nice background that you're seeing um, which is set up for three cameras that's why this is cut off so you can add your own logo there it'll show up I believe in this top corner here again you can't really move things around manually which I really wish you could but I guess they were just going for ease of use here we have overlays you can make transparent overlays like here's their um, example so you can make a transparent overlay if you just want a couple things like this to pop up. I haven't made any transparent overlays. I've just done full overlays like this. Um, it was just easier to add the picture to the same background and then it looks like it's just popping up, but it's actually a full screen image. So you can see like that. So these are the overlays we have. It's just a black one. Uh, pictures. I do have a transparent one here. This is a Spotify code for the album. So that I had to make a transparent 16 by nine image and then add that. I uh, had to make that in another program. I couldn't just bring that in like that. I had to make a full screen transparent image and then put that in the corner of it, if that makes sense. Um, you can also add video clips, which we use a lot because we're talking about um, lyrics in these specific songs that we've recorded. Um, it's also how I put a countdown on our videos. Unfortunately, uh, there's a 100 megabyte limit to the videos, which for most people is fine. But when you're trying to make a five minute countdown that features a song with drone footage in the background, getting to 100 megabytes can be really tough. Um, but I was able to get it down using the Handbrake app. So you can see here our countdown. Um, we have little clips that I clip on, click on when we talk about certain lyrics. So here's, we're going to talk about this lyric. So I'll show this clip beforehand, etc. So yeah, you can add your own video clips. And again, they'll be full screen. You can't adjust the size of these things. And then finally, we have backgrounds. So you can see here, I've made a customized background. Here's this example background. Or if you just want no background, it'll just be a black background.
so I've created a custom background here. It's just a JPEG image that I've created. And as you can tell, it's made for a three camera setup where two of them are up top and one's down here. And then these things aren't cut off. So I really like you can add the backgrounds. And then our last um, option other than settings is a private chat. This is really nice. So you and the people you're in the um, live stream with can chat to each other without anybody else seeing we do use that too when we need to take notes or even just add text like we had a note from somewhere else we wanted to bring in and not have to go look at a google doc somewhere so we just added it in the private chat that way we could reference that um, in the private chat so those are the all the options during the live stream this last button here is uh settings audio avatars you just got your camera and audio green screen settings like i said before so that is pretty much everything within the broadcast studio. Um, as I said, not fully customizable, which I would love, but I do understand why they didn't do that because I think this is kind of targeted towards people who aren't necessarily professional video people, but are professionals who want to live stream with other people easily and still be able to customize them. For that purpose, it's very good. And I would imagine the customization options you have would be great for 80 to 90% of people who want to use this sort of thing. Uh, most importantly, it seems to work flawlessly. When we're doing it in OBS, we're using Skype and we're bringing in NDI and we've got to mute this channel and have this channel on and take off the monitoring and we have to make sure we're all wearing headphones on this thing, but not on this thing. And it just gets a mess to get it to all work out. This just is, is flawless. It's basically like live streaming a Zoom meeting, really, um, with customization options. It's very easy. We can all hear each other. We can all see each other. There's no delays or echoes or anything we need to worry about. Um, so in that regard, it works really, really good. And it lets us focus on actually interacting and doing the live stream and not just messing with the tech stuff. Although I will say I do get distracted by the banners and I like to add random banners, but that's just my own problem. The actual app itself, I would highly recommend. But I do have one giant issue. Let me show you what that is. So here's the three plans. If you'll take a look at the three at the bottom of the plans, I think you'll notice what's missing from the basic paid plan. That's right. For $25 a month, you don't get to stream in 1080p. Seriously, StreamYard? You're not going to offer the standard video resolution for your basic paid plan? It, I, you may not know that it's actually 2020 and not uh, 2008. So 1080p is kind of important right now. In fact, it's just kind of the standard resolution for almost all video in the world. If I'm gonna spend $25 a month to use your service, I kind of expect to be able to stream in the standard resolution. This is so ridiculous, seriously. This makes me angry. 1080p is not a premium feature in 2020. It's the standard resolution. This would be like me going to a car dealership and buying a car and they were like, all right, here's your car with the standard package. If you'd like to upgrade to the premium package, we can include uh, that fourth wheel for you. Seriously, this is ridiculous. And to top it off, you have three plans and there's three basic resolutions out there for video. How could we possibly divide that up? I know, maybe we limit our free plan to 720. Our basic paid plan will offer 1080 as the standard. And then if you wanna pay for a professional, we'll give you 4K. That makes complete sense. Why would we not do that? All right, sorry for the rant, guys. I just think it's a little ridiculous and kind of sketchy, honestly, to not offer standard 1080p video on your paid plan. We had to use this in a pinch, but I probably won't be using it in the future unless they offer 1080p for that basic package. Because as I said, the app itself is great. It works flawlessly. I just have no desire to stream in 720p. So on that note, would I recommend this? Well, maybe if that 1080p resolution is not important to you or you're streaming 10 years ago, 
mean, if you know that like all of your viewers will be viewing on a small screen or on a phone or something, then it's not that big of a deal. Or if you're just far more interested in having an easy to use app that works than being able to stream in full HD, then yes, I would recommend this. It, the app itself works fantastic. I really, really like it. Again, it's just that giant fatal flaw of not having full HD streaming. You have to decide for yourself whether that is important to you or not. So that's all I got for StreamYard today. Let me know what you think in the comments. I love to hear about it. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit that subscribe button to see more just like this. Although I don't usually have rants like that. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you back here next week.